My name is Diego Alexander Escobar Gallego. I immigrated from Colombia. It was Andes. It's a small town about four hours from uh, from Medellin, which is uh, one of our major <laughs> cities. Oh, and I immigrated to the United States. So I came here when I was nine years old. And according to my mom, uh, she came here because she was looking for a better opportunity for us. Uh, where, you know, she was working in Colombia. Uh, she was struggling, uh, wanted to like pursue better opportunities. The money and the cost of living down there, you know, wasn't all that great. And I had an uncle here already in the States and, uh, and a cousin of mine. So therefore she already had people here that she knew. And that's what actually gave her that opportunity or strength to uh, migrate here? Well, I had many reasons. Uh, mainly the fact that I was dragged here, uh, not really much of <laughs> my own volition, uh, so not much of my choice. Uh, but the actual reason is because uh, domestic violence. Well, I got to America, uh, I mean it was just plane rides to Mexico. Uh, then it became a thing about crossing the border. So there was a hiring of a coyote, which is just a, person, a smuggler. Uh, and he uh, smuggled us through. Next thing I know, I was somewhere in California, Texas? No, California. And I just remember seeing we my first glimpse into the United States was essentially a kind of like a cul-de-sac, and it was just amazing because it was like everything you know from movies, and it's just like it's beautiful, it's perfect. The lawn was all manicured. It was it was it was amazing. Um, Adapting to this new environment, whew, it was really hard. It was very tough. So when I came here, I was uh, had just turned nine. So um, going to a new school, starting in a new school, was very uh, challenging. Uh, one, because I didn't speak English. So not knowing the language in itself was really hard. Coming here, you're, for, you're starting from zero. You know, you don't know the language, you don't know anyone, so you're, you're starting from zero. And a lot of a lot of that really depends on the kindness of strangers, kindness of, of other people willing to to help you out in your time of need. Uh, without that, I mean, it's it's already hard enough. I mean, I, I can't I can't even imagine my mother pulling all this off with two kids on in tow, and then just not knowing the language. I mean, it's it's crazy. I remember when uh, we, get, we were getting ready to come to this country and um, I sat down with one of my uncles who had already been here and knew a little bit of English so he was like trying to teach me like a few words and uh, be like so how do you say hello you know but of course I say it in Spanish I was like how do you como dice hola and he was like hello and I'm like hello like because you know it was different then when I didn't know how to say a word uh, some of the obstacles, I would say, I think the common thread among uh, immigrants is uh, racism and and having prejudice being levied against us. The type of obstacles that I've experienced due to my immigrant status has actually been um, education, believe it or not. It's later on in life when I was in high school. So I was a straight A student, I was in the National Honor Society, but come to find out, because you know, when you're young and you don't understand immigration and the law and how everything works, um, finding out that I didn't have a social security card or that I wasn't legal was definitely one of those things that just, for me, was shocking. Like for me, it was like detrimental because I had worked so hard throughout my education, getting good grades, you know, wanted to go to college. I had aspirations, I had all these dreams. And when I went to apply for school, 
and I asked my mom for my social security card. She told me that I was illegal, so I couldn't go to college. Uh, I couldn't accept the scholarships that I had earned because uh, I actually got a four-year scholarship from BU. The main obstacle that I deal with in my ethnicity or my parents being immigrants is the language barrier that happens with it, is my whole family being able to speak Spanish and me not really because I am grew up in America and I've only been surrounded by people who speak English and I was never fully taught it at home. So only kind of knowing the language is hard to talk to my like abuelitas, my grandparents, or just like the rest of my family. What obstacle? Uh, I haven't really faced any obstacles as far as my parents being immigrants. So as far as my ethnicity and people knowing that I'm Colombian or Hispanic, um, I've definitely had, you know, I've had some run-ins with police before. I think that having immigrant parents has affected my life more positively like if anything um, because it kind of just pushes me to be better in life so that like everything had a purpose of like their parents moving here for like the whole better life and whatever um, so my mom not being able to go to college definitely pushes me to like want to pursue it more and to just do better in school having immigrant parents affected my life just by kind of being seen differently like especially when people know that my parents are immigrants because I'll tell people sometimes and you know tell them their wacky stories on how mom came over on a tire and dad went <laughs> through the desert in the bed of a truck so when people, I tell people that they're like whoa like that's crazy that your parents actually are immigrants and I guess like really I by my peers I never actually get seen differently like they never look at me wow. different so I guess I've never really experienced any like backlash or any negative sides as far as having immigrant parents? As far as my life differing from my friends around me, I'd say the uninclusion. It's the difference of not being like white enough to hang out with <laughs> the fully American kids or not being like Hispanic enough or speaking Spanish to hang out with like the ethnic kids. Just small little differences like that, so feeling like nobody really connects with me the same way. I have seen and experienced uh, racism. I guess one, one time that I may have experienced a possible source of racism was when I was a sophomore in high school and I was with my, uh, my friend who was uh, Honduran as well. So it's You know what? I mean, no, that's really nothing I, I, I would prefer to talk about. Uh, while growing up, I, uh, when I came to this country, uh, we arrived uh, to Chelsea, Massachusetts. And even though it's a huge Hispanic community, uh, in my time, I don't know how it is now, I think it's a little bit more diverse, but in my time, uh, there were a lot of Puerto Ricans to live there. And to my uh, surprise, uh, you know, knowing that they were also Latino, they spoke Spanish and stuff like that, they were not very fond of people from other countries. So they used to call me wetbag, they used to insult me. Uh, it was horrible. It was a really bad experience. Um, I'm an only child, so... Sorry. <laughs> It was very hard and it still bothers me, I guess, as you can see. But to my surprise, the one thing that hurt me the most was a fourth grade teacher, fourth grade or fifth grade, I can't remember. Uh, she was my English teacher and she had asked me to read a passage and I had a very thick accent back then. And she made fun of me front of that whole classroom and I will never forget that uh, and from that moment is when for the longest time I had like really bad issues with my accent I barely wanted to speak I just kind of wanted just to hide and just 
not say anything and from that moment i shut down i never volunteered to say anything because i just didn't want to be put on the spot again until i embraced myself later in life because you know you learn from those experiences and you just become stronger but yes i've experienced that and i've also seen it happen to others as well people forget like the roots of America, which is all of us are immigrants. Like none of us were really born here, except for Native Americans, which ironically now are pushed into their own little camps to keep their own teachings to themselves or whatever. So really it's just like, just understand that everybody is human and that we all come from different places. Like, you know, just, you want to be a tourist, you want to go to Europe, people like to travel and go to other countries. And, you know, you don't want to be going to a country and tell people telling you to go back to your country or making you feel invited or making you feel like you're not safe just because you're from a different country. It's ridiculous. So, like, you just need to realize that everybody's human and, like, we all come from different places and have different backgrounds. And that is, like, the cool thing about our, about humanity is just, like, that we are just so different but yet, like, really the same. And people just need to remember that. And young people that are brought to this country with, again, by no volition of their own. And then they, they grow up in a country where they, again, assimilate. They grow up just like every other kid, watching the same stuff, enjoying the same stuff. I mean, people are people. Uh, one of the hardest things is being confronted with, with the idea that you are actually seen as an other. Uh, especially when... There is no one immigrant that I've ever met that does not love what this country is. Well, maybe not what it is, but the aspiration of it. The idea that it can be that shining city on the hill. A place where immigrants actually came and to, to supposedly make a better future for everyone, for themselves. Free of tyranny. Most of us actually do love this, seemingly love this country a lot more than even some natural born. You gotta think about what it takes for a person to move from one country and complete zero, no support system, nothing, and try to make it. Uh, I don't know if I have the strength to do anything like that.